In this video, we're going to make a kind of neat course hub meets user dashboard. It's a course homepage of sorts where maybe in lieu of a complete dashboard, you could showcase your courses and have a place where a user can go to right when they log in. I think this is a fantastic choice for somebody that just creates online courses and a learning system or environment, and you want a place where the user can go to and log in. So let's walk through step by step and create this together. To get started, let's go ahead and create a new page on our website. I'm going to call mine course homepage, something like that. You can give it whatever name that you want to. I'll go ahead and save this as a draft to get started and then click launch Thrive Architect. I'm going to go ahead and choose normal page for the type of page that I want to create. You could potentially choose one of these other options. However, for me, I like to keep everything within my theme template using Thrive Theme Builder, and I'm using a subdomain for my courses anyway. So if I choose normal page, I have my normal header here at the top that my users will see throughout my course site, and it keeps it really, really simple. To get started, one of the things that I like to do is I always like to put things inside of a background section. I just like to use this because you can do things like apply background colors, you can stretch it to full width here, and you can set a minimum height, and it's just a practice that I really recommend and I teach inside of my courses to use a background section whenever possible. Now inside of my theme, you'll notice that my background section rests right up against my header, and that's because I've removed all the extra padding. It's yet another reason why I recommend a background section. When I do it this way, I typically like to come into my layout and position, and I like to add about between 30 and 60 pixels of padding inside my background section at the top to pull it just a little bit away from the header. And I like to do this on a page level because I like that level of control and customization per page. Now what I want to do next is I want to add a bit of a title, something that will welcome the user to this course area or course homepage. So I'll say something like, welcome to you know, your course homepage, something like that, maybe course uh, hub, or maybe let's call it a course hub. Welcome to your course hub. We'll go ahead and apply a style. I'll, I'll apply my H1 style to that. This is going to vary depending on the font and the style that you have on your website. Now we'll add in a little bit of font down below and we can say something like, um, you know, uh, here you'll find all of your courses and the products you purchased at Vology. You know, you could do whatever you want there. And this kind of just welcomes them and gets them started. And then we're going to build a two column layout. We'll just drop in our two column layout right below our text here. And we've got a nice 50-50 split. I think we'll keep that, it looks really good. Let's go ahead and drop on the left-hand side a video, drop in our video element. And here you can put like a main welcome video Maybe a video how to use the course homepage or how to use the products that they've purchased and navigate and kind of access everything that you have to offer them inside of Thrive Apprentice or, or throughout your website. We'll click on main options and I'm, I'm just going to use a YouTube placeholder video, but this could be any video that you have on your site. And then I'm going to add in a content box here in my right column, I like content boxes because they're just a nice way of grouping things together and they kind of come pre-built with some padding and layout, which I, I think is really nice. And we're going to give this section on the right a background style by clicking background style on the left. Let's go ahead and add a background style to it. We'll choose a color, something like uh, Athens gray. We'll darken that up just a little bit. Matches my brand. You can make this whatever color you want. Let's drop in a text element. We're going to create like a basically a, a micro navigation or like a resources section. So we can call this our uh, resource links, maybe like uh, helpful tools or helpful links or uh, if I could spell, say uh, resource links, kind of a dumb name, but you can come up with something better. We'll say that this will be uh, H2. Let's do, yeah, we'll do H2. That's fine. I actually might adjust this a little bit. I have some font styling I want to get rid of and maybe we'll make this uh, size 24. I think that looks just a little bit better. Probably could have just used normal paragraph uh, font instead of an H2. This isn't going to index in Google because this is private just for logged in users, uh, but that'll work totally fine. Now I wanna add some useful links. So I'm just gonna use buttons. I think we can stylize these to look really, really good here. So maybe this one will be like join uh, the Facebook group. And then I really like the full width button layout. I think that looks really nice. We'll choose another one here. We can say um, maybe something like access the download center. 
maybe you have like a download area. And then our third one here, we'll just say contact support. I don't know, something like that. And now I have this really nice like uh, colored section here um, that I can that I could put some links into. And I think this just looks really nice as like an immediate thing the user sees right here. Now I want to stylize this a little bit. I'm going to click on the content box here on the right. I'm going to go to borders and corners and I'm going to, let's see, eight pixels. Yeah, I'm gonna round the corners by eight pixels. I typically like five to eight. And then on my YouTube video, I'm also going to round the corners here as well. Oops, I did five there, I'm gonna do eight. So now both our YouTube video and our resource section have just a nice rounded look to them. Okay, next I want to add my courses down below so that the user, when they log in, they can see some of the courses that they have purchased. So I'm going to go into the element tray and search for course, and you'll see that I have the course list. I'm gonna drop that right below our columns. And I'm just going to choose a very basic one because uh, you'll see here, I'm going to just drastically delete most everything in it. So let's just pick an easy one. I'll choose course list 13. Um, actually, I've never chosen this one before. We're just gonna probably delete everything. We're just using the course list element here. Uh, what I'm going to do first, uh, I can see that there's six courses. That's probably good. Um, actually, I may want to go to four columns and I may want to show eight courses. So I'll hit enter. There we go, I refreshed. That's probably closer to what I want to do. Uh, and now let's do a lot of cleaning up. Um, so first things first, let's toggle off both on the left-hand side here, the topic filter and the course search. We don't need either of those. Horizontal space, we've set this to 20. If I reduce this, you can see it's almost acting like a gutter between them. Um, I actually want to reduce that to zero. I don't, at least right now, we may come back and change it. And then this 50 vertical space, uh, we're going to reduce that to zero as well. I don't, don't think we need to control that here on the, the main course list option level. Okay, now we're ready to jump into edit design. And here's where we start to pretty much gut everything. Um, actually, I'm going to, rather than delete these little pieces inside here, the way that Thrive typically designs their course lists is that they use content boxes. So if I click here, this is a content box with a background image. I generally know why they do that. It's because people typically don't upload images all the same size. And when you use a content box that stretches the image in the background, it just tends to look more uniform. Uh, however, I do use uniform image sizes and I don't like boxes so uh, at holding images in the background. So I'm going to delete that. And instead, I'm going to open up my element tray, do a search for image, and then I'm going to drag in the cover image, which is a course list option. I'll drag it right there to the top. And now we have a clean image that represents each of my courses. And I don't need uh, this text here down below that says how many lessons are in it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, a couple more things. I don't like this hover effect. Um, probably should have chosen a different one that didn't have a hover effect. But if I click on the course element or course item rather and click hover, go to background style, I can delete that. Simple enough fix. Now on my lesson titles, if I click onto the link here, you'll notice up in the breadcrumbs at the top, I'm in the link text. I want to change that over to the text and then using this bar at the top, I want to center my lesson names. And then I also want to change the hover effect for this text. So I'll click back into the link text itself and I will go to hover and I will uncheck underline. I don't need any of that. Don't really like hover effects too much. Uh, and now we're looking pretty clean. Um, let's, let's test out if I like bold. So I'll highlight the text, choose bold. Um, I don't know, do I like that or not? Let's choose not bold. I'll leave this not bold, um, but you can edit yours and customize your font however you like it. I actually like the spacing between them and I like the space between the image. Um, so most of this is ready to go. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll click done. And then, uh, yeah, that looks pretty clean. So we'll go ahead and leave that just like it is. You could, if you wanted to, maybe add a title here that says uh, my courses or anything like that. Um, what we're going to do though, is we're going to make a change to this course list so that the user does only see what they have access to. You could, if you wanted to, maybe you're just getting started and you, or you want your users to see everything that you have to offer. You could leave all of these here and maybe somebody just has your first course and the other seven they don't have access to. In that case, when they click on the one they don't have access to, they would see your access restriction rules. So maybe a message comes up that says you don't own this course, click here to buy it. I still think that's a great user experience. But what I wanted to show you was that on the left hand side, you can click filter courses. And then here you can uncheck no access. 
and just leave has access and then click save and close. As an admin, I have access to all of my courses, but this would change for the user if they only had your first two courses, only the first two would appear. And it works itself out to be a pretty decent user experience. There we go. That turned out to be a, a pretty nice, clean, and very quick course hub or course homepage or whatever you'd like. And now this is where your users would go to or be redirected to when they log in. Now, I want to do just a couple more things here. I don't want to leave you hanging. I think there's two other additional options that we could do. Let's go back into our page. And again, one of the reasons I like to work in background sections is because with all of this inside of a background section, we could use conditional display. On the left-hand side, select conditional display. And what we can do now is we can make it so that the user sees different things based on a variety of different display rules. I have many other videos on the channel about conditional display, but one of my favorite features is to create an experience where if the user is not logged in, they are prompted to log in, and this becomes almost like your login page and course hub combo. So to do that, we'll keep this as our default display, but we're going to add another rule. And by doing so, you can see we've actually gotten rid of everything else, but don't worry, it's actually on the left-hand side. We just have to reselect our default display. Now let's go back to our new display. Let's give it a name. We'll call this our not logged in state and click apply. Now selecting our background section again, let's go ahead and add an element for our login form. So let's do a search for login and registration form, drop that on my page. And I'm just going to choose a very simple login form, something basic um, that looks totally fine. You can customize this however you want. My main recommendation here is with your new login registration form selected, change it just on the left here to login. That way the user is only logging in here. They're not making an account, nothing like that. Next, we'll click on our background section, do a very minimal amount of cleanup by going to layout and position, making it have 30 pixels of minimum height so that it matches the other one, and then it's looking pretty good. Now, we're not done just yet with our login and registration form selected. We do want to go to main options, and under submission action, let's just refresh this page because we're still dealing with the exact same page. When they log in, it will refresh, and they will see the dashboard. I like to turn off, by the way, this success message. There's, there's no need for it in this particular case. Okay, there's our login form that you can customize. And then once they're logged in, what's going to happen is they'll be shown the default display. But to make that happen, we actually have to add some rules. So with our not logged in state selected, click the far right option here to set display conditions. And we're choosing to display this content when the user is logged in. So this is acting like our course hub. So we'll just say if they're logged in, then they see this. We're not done just yet. There's one more thing I want to do. I want you to go to Thrive Apprentice and then go to settings and then log in and access restriction. And if you wanted that page to be your main login page, kind of like how I've taught on my channel before where I make my dashboard, by the way, built almost identically to what we just built together. If you want that page to be your login page, you would simply come here, remove whatever you have, and then find your course hub or your course homepage, whatever you called it, and that then becomes your login page. And depending on how you've linked it on your site, maybe it's your dashboard, maybe it's your student hub or homepage or something like that. All right, I certainly hope you've enjoyed building that together. If you have any questions about Thrive Apprentice or building anything in Thrive Architect, by all means, check out the rest of the videos here on my channel, leave a comment down below, or find more at convology.com.